Mojave Desert harbors a rich history. Here, dotted across the dusty landscape, are a number of old Nevada towns that have faded into obscurity. Today, I'm headed out to visit some of them. I'm taking an off-road history tour. One of the advantages of off-roading is that you can see hidden gems you wouldn't find any other way. Now today we're in the Mojave Desert in a tiny little town, tiny, called Sema, and we're meeting up with Rick Nelson. He knows all about this area. Rick Nelson. Hi, John. How are you, sir? Good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, finally. So listen, I know I'm in the Mojave, uh -huh. but that's all I know. Can you tell me more? Well, uh, yes. Actually, you're at a train depot. Train depots were uh, dotted the lines of the old railroads back in the day when every five miles they had to refuel or, or resupply. This is a rare gem because a lot of them over time have either been the wood that was left over, the structures were either taken away uh, by vandals, uh, burned for campfires, or just let to rot. For some reason, uh, people let this one stay and uh, we get to see the character of what they actually looked like back in the day. This is the general store and post office and if you look in the window, you actually see an old wanted poster. It's a time capsule. I mean, this is the way it was 100 years ago. Exactly. SEMA is too close to civilization for Rick. He's going to take me even further out in the middle of nowhere. So, John, we're closing in on the next depot. We've done about 20 miles. And remember how I told you that every five miles of the depot? Yeah. There was nothing there between the last one and this one. They just can sometimes just disappear. That's like banishing American history. It is. We stop at the Kelso Depot Visitor Center. My attention's immediately drawn to the abandoned post office. John, this is one of the reasons I do this. There's just so many great things you find every day. Things like this, a post office in the middle of the desert. But you gotta get off the beaten path. You can't Absolutely. stay in your hotel room. You gotta get out and explore. A Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Let's go to the big building. I, I wanna see the big the depot. The depot, yep. Founded by Union Pacific in 1862, the Kelso Depot is now a museum. During its heyday in the 1940s, this place was home to about 2,000 people and ran three shifts a day, 24-7. So this is where the people got their tickets and they could send out telegraphs. And if you look through this window, you look real close, you can almost see them walking around in their old-time clothing and their hats. And this depot operated from 1924 through 1985. And people could sleep in this depot. Yeah, mostly employees, and we'll show you those rooms upstairs. Let's go. I want to see that. So this side is one of the depot workers' rooms. Notice they have their own sink and their own toilet, and they even have the Union Pacific logos on the beds. At the start of the 20th century, trains were the primary mode of motorized land transportation. At the time, the U.S. had a steam railroad network of almost 200,000 miles. You could spend the entire day here soaking in the atmosphere. Rick had yet another off-the-main-road site to show me. Welcome to the Death Valley Mining Camp. There is so much to see here, John, you won't believe it. I already don't believe it. <laughs> Where are we gonna start? Well, this is the housing area and then the mines over there. Let's start the mine. Let's go. Okay. What I'm gonna say is the main op mining operation was 1899 to 1902. Every few decades, a new group of miners try their luck with newer equipment and methods of extraction. So, this is a diesel engine, for instance, and it still has the uh, number plate on it, serial number and all that. From what year would this have been? This is the 30s, late 30s. So this is somebody coming back years yes. later because and I said, hey, they found some stuff here. Let's see if we can go deeper. Correct. So here's the, the, the mill area. They would take from the mine the raw material, grind it up in this crusher, and the fine material would come out, and they would, uh, like, pan it, if you will, but at a large scale. Then Rick and I walk over to the actual mine, and I was shocked by what I saw there. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. That will give you the heebie-jeebies. It makes your knees weak. Now, normally, the government will come in and either fill it with cement, rocks, or a gate over it. This place has been untouched by anybody. Soon, we leave the mine area and head off to the next site. After a bit of a hike, we come upon an old home standing alone in the vast desert. So this is the gem of the entire property. Wow, it's in good condition. This house has been abandoned for probably at least 80, 85 years. Look at the tin roof. Wow. Isn't this awesome? Wow, it's like, uh, it's really well like nothing's style. happened in here. I mean, it's just completely, time has stood still. Yep. I mean, you could live in this today. Well, tomorrow with a little sweeping. Yep. Cloth-covered wiring and porcelain brackets suggest this home was built in the 1930s. Oh my Watch gosh. Watch yourself. Here's the door. We're going to the cooler. 20 degrees cooler. Here's where they kept cold stuff because they didn't have refrigerators back then. All the perishables were under here. Mm-hmm. 
you can see this how this all worked and what kind of life this was. And you know when it was a hot day, they would just come down here and say, <laughs> it's 100 degrees outside, but it's only 80 in here. Oh my gosh, this structure is incredible, completely huh? Completely in place. Everything is solid. Isn't that crazy? Look at the breeze coming through that big window there. It's stark, it's creepy, but it's beautiful. How many people lived here? It seems like a big family to me and the boss of the mine. That's my guess. If these walls could talk, what do you think they'd say? Watch me. <laughs> <laughs> think about it. Abandoned post offices, abandoned mines in the middle of the Mojave, towns that are no longer here. Nevada just keeps giving up her secrets. There's so much to learn and explore, and I'm glad you're along for the ride on Outdoor Nevada.